Well, today on Nation, we're talking about the seven essentials to window cleaning. Yes, you have to have these things, in my opinion. If you do or you don't, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR Window Cleaner. Dot com window cleaning resource and you are here what's going on thanks for visiting me uh, on this uh, when you're watching this or at least close to Thanksgiving so happy uh, turkey day to you if you celebrate either way hope you're having a great day this is a podcast designed exclusively for the service industry um, window cleaning primarily pressure washing janitorial all of that Oh, we're talking about the business side of things, which a lot of podcasts may not venture into. So please do share the content, like it, thumbs up, and most importantly, buy your supplies through me. Let me be your rep. Um, my number directs 862-312-2026. Any kind of supplies I can buy. Put them in your cart at windowcleaner.com and let me know and uh, shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Go get yourself some name brand coffee. And I can put that in for you. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Nothing. Saves you time. And uh, I get credit for it. So that's super awesome. I very, very, very much appreciate it. Uh, I want to be your rep. But either way, a couple quick shout outs for you this morning. I want to say what's up to Monarch Window Cleaning. What's going on, man? He's one of the OGs from the Mullen Jersey days. Like way back when. What's going on, man? Uh, Jeremy Douglas and uh, Bobby Walker from The Life of an Entrepreneur podcast man i'm glad that bobby doesn't listen he's too busy to listen but uh, i butcher his name all the time but if you want another podcast to listen to that's an awesome one uh but thank you guys for listening and liking thumbs up watching on youtube whatever we are uh encroaching on uh, we're well over 150,000 views um and listens so that's pretty awesome so thank you very much uh, and also at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off if you order through me. Uh, so listen to the end or fast forward to the end if you don't want to listen. But hopefully you're out there making some money now and uh, you're, just, you're just binging. That's awesome. But we are. We're talking about the seven window cleaning essentials. And uh, this list was actually really pretty easy to put together. Now I'm going to go in what I would say my top seven are. Um, but, uh, if you think of anything else or you want to put me your seven or even your top three comment on YouTube, search WCR nation and, uh, this episode, and that will let you conversate there. But, uh, there's a few things we're going to jump all over. I'm not going to show you tools. I'm not going to talk in depth about specific tools, maybe a category of tool. Um, but this is everything, everything that you can do for window cleaning that if you decide all you have is enough for seven things to make sure that you need or seven things I wouldn't ever dare not have, well, this is it. This is the one for you. But uh, there's a lot of different things. Some guys out there too are way on one side where they would never do anything with other stack letters. They got to have their stacks all the time. Um, some guys, you know, may have gloves on. They're always wearing gloves because they don't want their, you know, under nail to get dirty and things like that. That's cool. Your list may vary, but this is my list. So tell me how far off I am from what you got. But coming in at number seven is going to be a scraper or wool. Now I would say probably weekly. I talk to people about steel wool and people go, what you can use it on glass. If you're not using steel wool for ot or for zero 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 or bronze wool, man, you're missing out on an awesome, awesome tool. Now everybody knows the scrapers are there. If you think scrapers scratch glass and you're doing tempered glass and you can't use a razor on tempered glass, I don't know where that started. Uh, there is a potential for uh, fabricating debris, but it's so little. I mean, in the 15 years of cleaning windows, I've seen it once on a window. Not to say others aren't. Be safe about it, but of course, window scrapers aren't scratching glass. If they're rusty, they'll scratch glass. Same thing with wool. Now, we call it wool, but it's steel wool is mainly what I use. Bronze wool is great too, um, but that's more in the water feeding side, in my opinion. But I use steel wool, and every single tech has wool on them every single day at every single job. 
and it is a great tool to use dry to buff out a fingerprint. It takes a second. One, two, three, gone. Like uh, bug butt, something really caked down there. One, two, three, gone. It is so awesome. It works amazingly. The downside steel wool is that it rusts. So you got to watch for rust. If it did any discoloration, throw it out. Stuff's cheap. But the other side is it will get little steel fibers all over. So you want to have a pouch for your steel wool. Uh, Edaray makes a great one. Unger makes a great one. Mormon makes a great one on the side kit. Anything like that where you always have one pouch that's always steel wool. That's what I do because otherwise you get, uh, where's my speaker on this thing? Anyway, in your cell phone, yeah, there you go. Your speakers get covered in steel wool fibers because it's steel and there's magnets in your speakers and it is the most annoying thing. That's if you if you've never experienced it, it's absolutely that you try to get little fibers of steel off there. It's annoying. So make sure you have a pouch for that. But steel wool, use it. I'm telling you, it is like five dollars for a pack of like sixteen or something like that. Just buy it. But scrapers always have a scraper. Have a good quality scraper. I carry one inch for little stuff like storefronts. I carry it in my mouth, which you shouldn't, but force a habit. Uh, but a six inch scraper. Having that, uh, you can have it. It's got a cap on it. It fits in your tool belt. Triumph makes an MK3 that I really, really like. Uh, Ninja makes one too that pivots. But having a good scraper is also super, super valuable. So like if you're on a window with like like paint spray or artillery fungus or if you're on commercial stuff and there's tape on the windows, there's nothing that gets that stuff off faster than a scraper. Scrape it. It's super, super fast. So... Have yourself a good scraper. Don't get like a little, you know, one inch paint scraper or something. And, you know, that's just not great. Go with a Triumph. They're like 16 bucks. But anyway, scraper, steel wool, that comes in at number seven. Uh, number six in the top seven window cleaning essentials is huck towels. Now, for a lot of us, a lot of us, we're going, well, okay, what's special about huck towels? If you're not using or what's considered a surgical towel, those blue ones that are used at doctors like uh, ORs and stuff like that. If you're not using those and you're using microfibers, I'm telling you, if you don't do anything different, or you don't get anything else from this top seven list, that one is for you. Switching to a hawk towel will change your life. It is lint-free. They suck up water like a sponge on crack. They're awesome. They are cheap. Get the recycled ones. Uh, they're cheap. They wash, uh, you know, super well. They're durable. They'll last you six months. They're, they're just amazing. Way better than anything else there on the planet. Huck towels. That is the number one thing. We sell thousands and thousands of pounds, pounds, tons, literal tons of towels a year. It's crazy. Um, but that's, they're, they're awesome. And I also don't feel bad blowing my nose in it. Or if I cut myself or I crush my finger or something, I get blood on it. I don't care. Towels like that are cheap. I've wiped up oil with them and thrown them in the garbage. They're really, really cheap. Whereas if you're going with scrim, it's like 20 bucks a pop. If you're going with, say, the fish scale, fish scale is another one that's really pretty good, but a little on the pricey side. Uh, I don't feel as good. Those other ones, man, just do. I've dried up floors. I've wiped down dashes. I've wiped my windshield. You can use them for everything. Go with a good huck towel, a surgical towel, and it will change your life telling you here's a quick bit of information also sometimes people jump in and they say um which ones do you have are they the tight ones or the loose ones when you get a recycled hawk towel which is what you want don't go new because it takes like five to ten washes before they're softened up and they suck up water but a recycled one we personally here at wcr we go through all our towels so you're not going to get junky or ripped ones um but if you go with a recycled towel they're ready to use pretty much right out of the package. They get even better with a couple more washes. But uh, going with that huck towel, um, it, it is an essential because every single job we use them on, every single window we use them on, that's what we use to detail. Windows, frames, everything. Everything. So go with that. But people say, um, you know, are you the tight ones or loose ones? When you get a recycled one, it's a batch. So they send us pallets of towels. We go through them, but we don't know who's manufacturing them or where they're coming from. We know that those are recycled from the hospitals. They take them out of use and they sell them to janitorial companies and, and companies like ours. And then we 
send them on to you guys. So it's very hard to know which ones we have other than blue and green. But uh, very, very seldom do we get the ones that uh, aren't very aren't very good. I think once in the past, maybe 10 years, I remember getting a batch and like, uh, I didn't like those. The ones we have now are just super soft. Uh, we've had those same ones going on for a while. So it may be a manufacturer or the uh, product that the company's producing or picking. But man, they've been really, really good. So you may not be able to pick exactly what they are, but uh, you're going to love them. If you haven't tried a hawk towel, you can get a dozen of them for 13 bucks or something. Do that right now after this episode. Call me and we'll get your order. But they're gonna they're amazing. I, I'm surprised at how many people don't use hocktails. I thought that was like everybody used them. And there's actually still a lot of people who don't. Um, if you're still using microfibers, man, I can't use microfibers. I get it like my hands are rough, you know. Window cleaning in Wisconsin, they get cracked and just, you know. It's just hard to keep them not. And the microfiber like clings to my skin. It's awful. It's just awful. So uh, try very hard uh, to switch over. Anyway, enough of hot towels. I love hot towels. I love them very, very much. It would have been number one. But I feel like a lot of people know about it. Most of you do. If you've never heard of a hot towel, comment down below. But anyway, uh, number five on the top seven list of window cleaning essentials is the bucket on a belt. A Boab is super, super valuable. I know a lot of guys are just setting their tools on a bucket or in a sieve, in a bucket. You have to go and get the tool, then you don't just have it on you. Having it on you holds the water. It's better than a leather holster, in my opinion. The water collects in the bucket. You dump it out at the end of the job. It always collects. You don't get water all over the house. Now, if you have a smaller, slimmer bucket on a belt... It almost can wring out your scrubber as you're putting it in, and then you'll get water. So you get a drip guard on there, or you just get a bigger bucket on a belt. Uh, Ninja makes a great bucket on a belt, nice and wide. Um, the Samurai bucket is probably my favorite one, but it's pricey. It's the second most expensive one we have. We also sell one called the Silencer, which I know is backordered right now. Uh, but that is a f uh, cloth one with giant pockets, no wet leg, but but it's 200 bucks. So go with the uh, Samurai. Samurai's 50 bucks. Super, super nice. Nice and wide and open. It doesn't ring out your scrubber, which is very uh, convenient to not have a uh, wet leg. But if you're not using it, use it. And I'm not going to talk a lot on bucket on a belt because you should all have it, right? Anyway, number four. Number four on the list, top seven window cleaning essentials, is going to be your print. That's your business cards, your brochures, stuff that you hand out. Four by six postcards. You put a four by six postcard in uh, in a batch of, uh, you know, with your envelopes. Or you can put out a third sheet of paper if you get them printed and cut. Um, business cards, you hand them out every single day. Anytime someone asks you, oh, do you do house windows if you're on a commercial job? How many times does that happen? A thousand times. Every customer I do, every single customer, every single time gets a business card, a brochure, and uh, what we call a third page, which is a third of a sheet of paper. That's a different service. We cut them down and each third sheet is a different service. We cut them into little like inserts and they get them all. And people say, well, why don't you not do that for every single person? You've done this person for five years. Yes, but guess what? Every time that we're there, they get our material that they can hand out. Everybody talks about, oh, who did you use to wash your windows? Who did you use to paint your house? Who did you use to redo your roof? Everybody wants to know. Because if they trust Mrs. Jones, they instantly trust the company because Mrs. Jones is telling them that she liked them. Referrals are huge, you know that. But giving them the material to be able to give it out. I give, uh, in each of our envelopes, we actually give two business cards. Uh, and then the brochure and all the other stuff. And that's just so that they have extras. They feel like they can get rid of one if they feel like they need to keep it. Now, they know our number. And we're going to remind them in spring and fall to do the service anyway. And I'm going to send them things every month to kind of little postcards and things. But they're going to have the information to give away. Yes, somebody can save it in their phone. Yes, somebody can, you know, oh, let me pull up their number. Let me pull up my record. But give them a business card. With, oh, I got a business card here in my pile. Let me give it to you. They just give it to them. They're giving away your information. 
It's because of those people that you're getting referrals. We all try to increase those referrals. Referrals will be 50% of your um, uh, revenue every single year. You check your marketing. If you really, really look at your marketing, 50%. That's huge. Why not get it there? If you're only doing 20%, up those numbers. Make it easier for them. Doing print. Doing new brochure puts you to another level. Now, a brochure, trifold brochure, yes, it sounds corny. Make it color. Make it super nice and glossy. Professional. Don't print it on your bubble jet, right? But uh, having a brochure, when you give them that, it gives them something like, wow, this is a company. As opposed to, oh, this is just a guy washing windows. Like, you have to kick yourself into that other level. Yes, they'll give the brochure away also, but they're also going to look at it. Because it's so nice, they'll look at it. I'm telling you. So do that. Make sure to put all the prints you can in there. Print super valuable. Uh, if you're not using at cost printing also, again, this is a very salesy episode. I don't mean to make it this way, but uh, we do print. You can actually have your print done through me too. So let me know. We'll get you done on that. Um, print is cheap in the, I mean, business cards. I have really, really nice business cards. They are called trifecta paper. I have them for here. If you've gotten one of my business cards, they're super thick. It's a matte finish, almost feels like suede. And it's got like an inlay of red on the outside. It's just the card costs $20 more than a normal card to get a thousand of them. I don't know what they are, but it's so worth it because when I hand it to people, it's something they want to keep. It's something they want to, if you get those like thinnest, you know, thinnest floppy business cards, somebody looks at it, they throw it away. They just throw it away. It looks like a label or like a tag on a piece of clothing. They just pitch it. You give them a real nice business card and they're going to keep it. They're going to set it somewhere. They're just going to comment on your business card, which means they look at it. It's super valuable. Trifecta paper, by the way. Uh, The number three on the list of the top seven window cleaning essentials. And by the way, I do say this, but if you go to YouTube um, when you guys are busy, my, the YouTube's, uh, views go down and then in winter, everything picks back up. People go and binge. It's awesome. Uh, it's the, uh, um, uh, audio, the podcast version that is always up at a certain level. Uh, but go to YouTube comment. We've only been getting a few comments on the videos now cause you guys are busy, which is awesome. But, uh, comment if this list isn't what you think. You got things to add to it or things you take off or reasons that you agree or disagree. Comment down, man. I'd love to hear it. I would love to hear it. Second only to uh, uh, telling me, you know, via text, which a lot of people do. They text me and they tell me their stuff because they're going to be ordering or they're putting in an order and they start talking about it. it's awesome. So thank you guys. But anyway, okay, back to the list. My ADD is going. But uh, it's, uh, number three is um, individual bins for gear. Now, this is more if you have employees. If you're just by yourself, your truck is your bin, really, right? But when we changed over to bins, we, we call them bins because, I don't know, whatever. It's it's just a little like Tupperware thing that can hold everything. And they got locking handles where the handles fold up, right? Nice bins. And each employee gets one and we logo it. They can decorate it if they want. They could do whatever. It's a cheap, you know, $15, $20 bin. But once that happened, all of a sudden people had pride in their gear. Now, let's let's sit back and think of this for a second. If I hand them a squeegee, a bucket and a belt, uh, whatever, they take it and then they go and just put it back on the shelf or somebody else can use it, they don't much care about it because it's not theirs. They're just using it. They're renting it. Same thing where I give them a squeegee scrubber bucket on a belt, but then I give them a bin and it goes in that bin. And I can always audit those bins to make sure they got what they need, all that. They know what they have. And they have everything on the truck with them every day. Instead of like, oh, man, we needed this. We left it at the shop. Oh, I needed this and we didn't bring it. It's always with them even if they don't need it. The other thing is it's theirs. It is theirs in their brain. That's their bin. No one opens another person's bin. You do not go in another person's bin. You do not take a tool out. If you want a tool, you ask the person, they'll get it out of their bin. All of a sudden, you give them possession of their tools and possession of their equipment, and now all of a sudden, they're super stoked. They have, they, they feel like, I need to keep it nice, you know? And that's all because of bins. Super, super simple concept, but um, yeah, try bins. Uh, I'm taking a sip of coffee. I have sore throat here. 
Okay, back to it. But bins, try bins. If you got employees, man, I'm telling you. The other nice thing is bins. You can set them on shelves. You can make racks for the bins. And uh, they take them on and off the truck every day. And that's how you know. Check your bin at the end of the day. Go through. See, make sure you have three extra rubbers on there. Make sure you have a pack of blades. Make sure you have... When you go through the checklist, which I put on the inside lid of the bin, when they go through that checklist every day, they also know, if oh, I ran out of blades. That's right. Then they put new blades in their in their bin. They're good to go. It's uh, really, really such a dumb, simple idea, but it's super valuable. So if you're using employees, do the bins. I don't even know where I get my... I think from Home Depot, I just buy like 10 of them at a time and we store them and then I use them. But anyway, just get a bin that's actually nice because they beat them up, you know. Um, but yeah, get a bin. Do a bin. It's it's so valuable. Uh, but the number two on the top seven list of window cleaning essentials for me is the floater board. Now, I'm going to explain the floater board again. And I know I have... Uh, so I'm beating a dead horse on this one, but it is the greatest thing business wise that you can do for your company. And this is what it is behind me on my desk, not here. I have a whiteboard and it's called the floater board. And what that is, is jobs that we float. That means any job that no one has to be home for. So gutter cleaning, um, exterior windows on casement projects, um, concrete cleaning, uh, anything that I don't need somebody to be there, what I do when we book is I say, okay, great. So uh, with that appointment, we have you down. We're going to put you on what's called our floater board. That means we'll get you done as soon as possible. And it should take about two weeks, whatever your timing is at that point. I put it on the floater board. And if someone cancels or reschedules or the crew gets done super fast or say they're on a job and all of a sudden their job, they got done at half the time because it went faster or the homeowner was helping him or whatever. Instead of coming back early and going, uh, what should we do? Always floater board. If somebody comes in on a Saturday, wants to pick up extra hours, if it's the middle of summer uh, and the, the sun is still up and somebody wants to work, somebody needs a little extra money, somebody wants to come in on a day that we didn't have anything scheduled, say they want to do uh, you know, uh, a weekend or something, it's always there. The 99% of the time, <coughs> excuse me, is when um, they get done at the end of the day. Uh, if it's like three, they'll be like, hey, uh, they'll call the office and say, hey, we're looking for a floater. Uh, okay, cool. Where are you guys at? Let's just double check where the truck is. Okay, we got something kind of close. Here you go. Uh, it is uh, this, this, and this. Um, they can come back to the office to get all the paperwork or because the floater one, they're still going to go and knock on the door and say, hey, uh, we had you scheduled on the float uh, board and we're here to do your service. They're still going to do that, but they're going to say is because we didn't know we would get you done today. We don't have the invoice, but we'll be sending that over. We could still take payment today. I'm going to send over the invoice. I use QuickBooks. It's an email thing. I can email it to them directly as soon as they're doing the float thing so that they have it and they can pay it before the techs leave. They can collect a check. They have a receipt book in the car. So if they do write a check, they get a receipt. Um, they get all that and the float board is amazing. It fills up the schedule in places that you never would have thought. We've had jobs where it looked like it was going to rain. We have a seven-day rain guarantee. You don't need to cancel. We can still take care. And people are just like, nah, I'm going to reschedule. Okay. Well, now they have a four-hour block of nothing. What are they going to do? Sit around? Or are they going to go make some money? Something else. You keep that floater board like a, like a pipeline filled. And you always have that work at the disposal to do whenever you have a slow time. It's just really, really valuable. Just get yourself a whiteboard, write on permanent marker, float on the top, and then you just, I make lines with a ruler, and I write stuff down on that board. Make it with tape. That sounds weird, but like uh, permanent marker, you actually can erase permanent marker with a dry erase marker. Yeah, it sounds weird, but you can. So make a marker with tape and it won't ever go anywhere. But the float board is super, 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 super valuable. Business-wise, the most valuable thing for scheduling, for making sure your days are full, because that's the point. The point is we, we would love for every day to have at least eight hours of work. That would be great, right? Because that's capacity. Then we would need to hire more crews or something like that. But for who you have now working with you, eight hours a day is it. That's what we strive for. Floater board helps you. So do the floater board. Don't hate on the floater board. Just try it. Uh, and the number one thing on the top seven window cleaning essentials is the water fed pole. I know. Listen, listen, Linda, Linda, listen, I know 
this is coming off a little salesy. This whole episode did. I don't know why that is. Sorry. I don't know. But anyway, water-fed pole to me is the most important thing that's ever come out in window cleaning. Not because I sell it, but because I've used it for 10 years, over 10 years. I've owned a window cleaning business for 15 years. I have been selling for three. Okay? The water-fed pole is the most amazing tool. Now, it does not work in someone's living room. I know you guys are rolling your eyes. Here's the, here's There's two schools of thoughts. Guys that use it and love it. And the other one is guys that never used it. And um, they hate it because they think it's taking their jobs or... Uh, it's not the traditional way or it's if you're one of those i have something to say if you're one of those people who go they don't do good a job as you're wrong you're 100 percent wrong i'm looking right at you you're wrong you did the job wrong you use the equipment wrong you know somebody who did the equipment wrong or my favorite one oh all my customers tell me you better not use that water pole those things don't work no not when you do them wrong if I did it right, it's going to look better than a squeegee. I'm going to clean the frames and the window all at the same time, and that's going to wipe it down. The windows will stay cleaner longer because of that. You're not getting rain bouncing off the window on the frames and dirtying the windows back up. Now, you can't use it in someone's living room, right? You can't use that in, like, wood-framed windows. doesn't work real well. can, can suck out. I got a job that, that does that. But for everything else, the waterfed pole is absolutely epic. Absolutely epic. Now, one of the best things is people who hate on it, they get it, like, oh, I'll try this. Give it an open mind. It's just like if I handed a new person a squeegee for the first time and said, do that window, they would do it and it would look like a horse sneezed on it. Literally, that's what they would look like. Like a horse just sneezed on the window. And people are like, no one in history has ever said, ah, oh, look at that window. Well, I guess squeegees don't work. Never. But for some reason with water-fed, because maybe they just don't understand the technology. Anyway, water-fed poles, number one. If you're not using water-fed, you need to get off the uh, the uh, old school train. I know they're pricey, but they are worth their weight in gold. If I could do a house, and, I have to, and I've been on the field for years now, right? Um, but if I had to get back in the field, somebody was sick, or, or um, they really, really just needed somebody... Give me the water for pole. You guys can do the rest because it's so much easier. It's enjoyable. I was like, oh, yeah, but you're, you get a sore neck. I take a sore neck over busting my hump two times harder, trying to clean interior windows and moving stuff and squeegeeing and detailing corners. and Water-fed, you don't do any of that. I do projects water-fed that I wouldn't do with a squeegee. I'd have to get a lift. I told you guys, this is one of my, my big thing. This is the last thing before I wrap it up. One quick story. We did a project. It was at what we call a mid-rise. So it was like three stories and I think all three stories. Three stories. It was a mid-rise building and a bunch of townhomes. There were three stories. Okay. They had security grates. Those are bars that go across the uh, patio doors because there was no balconies, but you could open a patio door, but they didn't want you to fall out. A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, air in and all that. We thought, well, we never, never used it. We got a lift. It took us, um, uh, it took us a ten-hour day for four guys. So it was a forty-hour job, um, with a lift. When we switched over, one year we're planning our list. We plan our list at the very beginning of the month for the month. And he goes, my operations officer says, hey, don't get a lift for that project. We're not going to use a lift this year. So what are you talking about? He says, I'm going to I'm gonna do it water-fed. We're just going to give it a shot. If anything, then I guess we'll have to get a lift, lift and we'll learn a lesson. I'm like, all right, well, it's going to take you longer. We'll schedule it on a Friday so that you can work Saturday if you if it takes you too long. Because I'm thinking those grades, right? They got it done and saved four hours of the job with four people. They saved 16 hours. 16 hours man hours they took off the job that's crazy what they did was it went faster it saved me 16 hours of payroll and i didn't have to pay 512 dollars worth of lift rental drop off and pickup fee and fuel surcharge and all that that right there 
is why Waterfoot is what it is. It's so much faster. It does so much, uh, absolutely the same, if not better job than, than regular window cleaning, as long as you learn how to use it. I just had a guy the other day who was like, ah, uh, I got this job and uh, I got oxidation on the frame, so I just need to do it traditionally. No, you don't. Yeah, because it's really bad. Okay, great. You can use Waterfoot for that. No, no, I scrubbed it. If I scrub any more, more paint's going to come off. Yeah, that, that's the point. That's oxidation. You want the oxidation to come off. No, next time I'm just going to do it traditionally. Argue me all you want, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Anyway, here's a thumbs down on the video. It's all going to be from Waterfoot haters out there, but either way. So go out there and uh, do some of these seven, but uh, most importantly, if you need any supplies, I would love, love nothing more. It is a virtual high five from you guys. Uh, and I love you guys just say you love the podcast, man. It really, really means a lot to me. And there's a lot of you out there who are super loyal in your buying and buy always through me. I really genuinely, genuinely appreciate that. Uh, that's why I do what I do. Um, and hopefully if you got some value, you want to put an order in with me, that's awesome. My number is 862-312-2026. The code this week, if you tell me, is uh, a horse sneeze. Let's do that. Horse sneeze. If you tell me that, you'll get 5% off your order and free shipping if you order through me. You can text me, 862-312-2026. Listen, the weirder my codes get, the less people use them. It's so weird. <laughs> I had, I, had uh, I Love Bobby as one of them. I think like a dozen people maybe used the code that week. It was, it was nothing, nothing compared to normal. But it was maybe because it was kind of weird or something. So uh, anyway. Horse is this week's code. But let me know and we'll get you that discount. Plus Black Friday sales, of course, are going on. Make sure to buy that stuff. We'll be done when it's done. It's done. Call me. Let's order the stuff. 862-312-2026. And until next time, go out there and be epic.